Here's a harmonically rich riff from one of my favorite bands with a Lord of the Rings name. I've always thought that this section was very pretty and harmonically unusual for metal. Turns out that I'm right about it being pretty, but maybe a little less right about how unusual it is. The whole thing is broadly tonal. It's made up of two similar floaty subphrases, each of which starts with something and ends up at a pretty clear B major chord, which at the end of the second subphrase resolves satisfyingly to E minor to start the first verse. There's also an intensifying effect. The subphrases actually land on B a few times, but it sounds to me like each time that they do, there's more urgency to them. When I was marking up my transcription to prepare this video, I wrote things like B without teeth on the early ones and B with lots of teeth on the later one. So, as I sometimes say, there are definitely some tonal bones, but what's happening before these clear dominant chords is a little hazier. First, there's this intro figure, which only happens once and is roughly outlining some G minor type stuff with some chromatic neighbor tones. Then there's a slightly jarring transition to sitting on a B natural for a while. Before we settle down to an A minor area. This A minor, though, is really more like an A minor 9. That means that it includes G and B almost always. Then there's a little run that also has a quick E flat. And then we arrive again at a B without teeth. Uh, and then there's some other flourishes that introduce an F sharp, which gives all of this kind of A Dorian sound. before it eventually gets to that B7 flat 9 sound that ends the subphrase. The second subphrase is basically the same, but without that G minor thing at the start. And, as mentioned at the top, with some more teeth on the B chords when they show up. So, from a zoomed out perspective, we got something kind of conventional. We have that striking G minor intro line, but then it's basically just going from A minor, which is classic predominant, to B, which is the dominant, a couple times before resolving to E minor in the verse. I've had this nagging thought that this isn't the best way to analyze this. To finish this video, I want to try to articulate an alternative. The problem, as I see it, is that even though this analysis is accurate and would make a Theory 1 instructor happy, I don't think it does justice to how angular and like not tonal I always feel like most of this passage sounds. I'm inspired here by an article that Harris Berger wrote, where he makes the argument that basically it's the sound of certain intervals that matters in metal harmony more than what traditional harmonic analysis might tell us, so more than functions and scale collections or any of those other things that you, you typically learn as harmony. This is kind of a atonal perspective on harmony, which I've talked about in a few other videos. I think that the A minor part of this riff is definitely an example of this. Instead of hearing it as a stretched out A minor chord with a bunch of extensions, I think I hear it more as being about a ton of major and minor seconds. Just listen to how many there are in these little stretches. And then the 
whole drama of it is that it moves from this floaty second Z world to a more direct, sharper third Z world at the end of these subphrases and pulls us into a different kind of harmonic world, which isn't, you know, just like a different chord, but it's also a, a different way of treating harmony instead of being kind of floaty and modal uh, and, and even atonal and interval based, it's uh, definitely tonal and directed at some other chord. <laughs> I made a promise to myself that after the last string of 15 to 20 minute videos I've made that took five years off my life each, uh, that I'm going to make some shorter ones. So I think that will be it for this very cool riff. See ya.